Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another DC power supply from Delta Electronica. This one is called E0300 and this is a 0 0.1. I got two of these and if they look a little bit familiar I already released another video a long time ago about a power supply that it looks exactly like this but it was the 30 volt 1 amp version but other than that it looks exactly the same and this is why I had the idea I was not going to make a video about this one because everything will be repeated and there was no fun, no joy in explaining everything once again. So I started looking at, uh, at them and testing and uh, try to uh, find all the bugs. One is working, one is defective so that I know that I can fix this. But during my quest, I find they are very, very different. And this is the whole idea about this video. I want to show you all the cool, cool things that is in this very special one. Because it's a 300 volt version. It, yeah, it, this is also um, a 30 watt output. And it's also linear. But there is a... 100 hertz or a mains frequency SCR pre-regulator like a switch mode sort of a pulsed mode pre-regulated uh, regulator in this one before the output linear stage and this is definitely one I uh, want to uh, talk about and it's also where my problem is. So when I got the two power supplies they were mounted together like screw together side by side using the side screws here and side plates and a little 19 inch oops holder like that and as you can see here everything was this dirty and this dirty inside and it's this is the side plates it was smelly and absolutely terrible And uh, this one is the defective one. And what I found quite fast, that was the two missing components right there. And that will be SCRs. So two missing SCRs and uh, a couple of other components were broken. And I, of course, replaced all these and cleaned everything. I love this design. It's so, so nice and beautiful. And the very big and good meter. We've got volt and amp sets in here. Yeah, super, super sexy design. Look at this little nice case here. And in this socket here, just like all the others, there is a little uh, plug-in module that contains, in this case, it looks like two op amps, but one is a one a single and the other one is a dual um, op amp. You see here TL81 is a single and the other one 82 is a dual op amp. Both of these plug-in boards, they work. <laughs> Typical me to add all sorts of uh, permanent markers on everything, right? Let's look a little bit um, at their circuit boards from the top. They, of course, look completely identical. And these two, they went through my super, super deep, deep cleaning. So look, they look almost like new. And the back side was coated with a thick, thick layer of varnish. So this is the one that worked and nobody touched it since 1986 or something like that. Wow. That is nice. 
The only thing I'm a little bit sad about is that, of course, they added a thick layer of coating on the back, but why not also coat it on the top? Okay, we've got two ICs in sockets, but they could have covered these up and, you know, coated the rest on the top as well. The other one was from the unit that was defective. So the previous owner had the idea he could re-solder every solder joint on the board. And now it looks absolutely terrible. And he, of course, didn't find the uh, bug from this, but he's causing uh, yeah, a lot of damage to the board. There is a, 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 there we are, a few things I want to show you on this um, design. The first one is, of course, a power resistor right next to uh, an electrolytic capacitor like that. That is, of course, not a good idea. It could have been moved a little bit away. So now this one is going to have a little uh, shorter lifetime. So I will, of course, change those. You can see the circuit board. I don't know how easy it is to see on this one. Let's look at the other one. Yes, you, I think you can see the traces in this area here. It's a little bit dark, not super dark, but a tiny little bit darker, right? So that just reveals that, that the, this uh, power resistor is not there just for looks. It is running a little bit warm. And uh, for a cost, there's a, another cool thing. Uh, I will, of course, go through the schematics uh, a little bit later, so you will see all the details. But well, this one here is a Xena diode, the ref, super reference, together with the op amp transistor and all this. And that one, this makes up a, a parallel voltage regulator. And this is, of course, 6.2 volts. This is the very expensive uh, uh, 1N825, super, super good 6.2 volt uh, Xena diode. And here's another 6.2 Xena diode that is not important. So they just use a super, super cheap Xena diode for that. <laughs> ah, so that is so good. And of course, they don't use this cheap Xena up here because it's the super reference. So this reveals it is a very, very uh, good and interesting uh, product. Also, this resistor here is in parallel with the other resistor right next to it. This one sets the current that goes through the signal diode. Not the voltage. No, 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 but the current. They want to be sure that they pull the exact correct current through the signal. And then whatever voltage it, it's making is not super important because it's gained by the op amp and all that. But they want to have exactly the right current because at that point, um, the signal is performing super good when it comes to temperature drift. Like many of the Delta Electronica devices, it's quite easy to find the schematics and documentation and everything. So this um, schematic here, you can see the dotted lines. This tells, this is the plug-in board, and the rest down here is the main board. And then you, of course, have your um, transformer, you have a very big inductor right here. And everything is, of course, explained in this paper here. So that shows the big main board, plug-in board. There's also the, the little tiny little rear-mounted board with a serious regulator transistor and a little pre-driver for that one. We have the meter and the meter switch. Well, this is not uh, super, super... Uh, important right now. I want to show you what I've figured out on the schematic. So if you're going to debug a power supply like this, or I mean, I mean exactly this one, um, here's what I've done. I've adjusted the output to 50 volts. So this is, uh, this is what you need to do first. And then uh, every voltage that I've put in here is referenced to the same ground. So, uh, so this is just easier for your voltage measurements. So the first little thing I want to show you is this little winding down here. Uh, this is a 15 volt AC winding and the power on LED is mounted 
with a diode in series and a resistor like that. And this makes the LED blinks real terrible when you're videoing this, obviously. So it's not running on DZ, but it's running on the blinky blinky. And, and because there's a, a diode like this, so it's 50 hertz and not 100 hertz. So that is a, a little thing that I'm not super happy about. And I will upgrade this uh, at a later point. I have a super, super good uh, update for this. Rectifier bridge, and then we have minus 22 volts down here. Two capacitors in parallel for whatever funny reason. And what you see here is another little Sina diode and two um, high voltage, high power transistors. And they are uh, coupled, like you see here, as a constant current generator. So there's a constant voltage on those two resistors. And they try and pull the two points down here, down to minus 22. And the current is about, what, 2 milliamps or something like that, right? And this is for discharging of the input side to the linear regulator and the output. So there's a constant voltage or constant current discharge on the output. And this is, of course, on the side before the current measurement uh, resistor and before the amp and voltmeters. And they, of course, compensate for the loss in the current sense resistor to the output. Then we have something that is really, really interesting in all this area here. And this is the switch mode um, pre-regulator. So, of course, we have a winding here, 350 volts AC. And uh, we have an inductor. And here is a bridge well, made of four individual diodes. See, here is the interesting thing. This, they call them D, those three and the top one here is a um, PUT. It's called 2N6027. So <laughs> this is a programmable unijunction transistor. It's very, very interesting because it's different from these two. Those two are SCRs. And you'll see the schematic symbol is also different here. I um, made and published a, a little bit ago a video about how to test and how they work, those PUTs. And this is exactly the PUT from this power supply that is in this video. So I will put the link in the description and then you can read all about the PUT. But the short, short um, resume of that uh, video is that it's exactly the same as an SCR, but the gate voltage is reversed and the gate uh, voltage is referred to the anode, not the cathode. If you look at the SCRs, the gate voltage is positive and it's in relationship with the cathode, as you see here on the schematic symbol. So this is actually how you read the schematic symbols of these two devices. So there's a charge system to that capacitor here. This contains the energy that is ready to be uh, triggered this way to trigger those two and back like this. So this is the trigger current loop, okay? This transistor here, together with this Sina diode and those resistors here, they set a, up a voltage point here. So this is 84 and the output is 50, okay? So this is, uh, what is that? So a little bit more than 30 volts more on this capacitor here. So this is a DC voltage that is higher than the output voltage, all right? And it constantly monitors the voltage drop here using the Sina diode and this transistor here. So when you need more or less voltage, this system here will allow this voltage to rise and then becomes higher than the gate voltage. And then it will be activated and hammer all this energy from this 47 nano all the way into the active gate of these two, depending on where we are in the sine wave. Are we positive or negative? Which one is active? And then it will charge this until the next pulse or the next uh, mains uh, you know, you know what I mean, the next uh, zero crossing, obviously it's gonna go off there, right? And then it's gonna 
give a little pulse. Uh, you need more and more pulses, and it's just going up, up, up. So that is how it works. And then, then you have the end doctor here to give you more time. Otherwise, it's just going to hammer up, right? There is one little fault in this schematic, and this is exactly why uh, it broke down in the first place. And that is, there is a missing resistor in this loop. If you see the 47 nano going all this way, see, there is no current limiting current controlling component only the internal uh, resistance in this capacitor sets the current that goes this way and obviously these components can't um, handle whatever current so this is exactly how to break it all you have to do is lift this capacitor and put in a tiny little resistor in series with this capacitor and now you have a controlled limited current and you will never break any of these components this is, of course, something I'm going to um, get back to in a later point. But that is, of course, uh, how it works around here. And then there is another little uh, funky feature in this schematic, and that is this transistor right here. I believe these components right here was also added at a later point. Probably they were not on the schematic uh, in the first version. But, of course, you can see what is happening. If you have a very high output voltage, you have an even higher voltage here, obviously, right? So what happens if you have maximum voltage, maximum current setting, and you short the output? So that means shorted output will give you zero volts on the output, but you will still have the full potential voltage available on your C9 capacitor. So all this voltage and all this current will just blow up your serious uh, transistor in a few milliseconds, or probably even faster than that, then it's going to break. So what this system here is doing is it's measuring the voltage over this transistor. When this voltage becomes too high, set by this 82 volt Zener and current protected by this one, activates this transistor here, and then it activates the current regulator shut down. So it's thinking that, oh, output current is way too high, and it's uh, just Mika kills the output drive to the pre-driver, output driver, and then your output current becomes almost zero immediately when there is a short and too much voltage over the output transistor here. So let's talk a little bit about the plug-in board up here. So we got, yeah, it looks like two op amps, but this one is a single op amp. This op amp here, you can see there's just the positive and the ground and the negative. That's the, the point where these two schematics there, there should have been a little bit more separation here, I think so, right? So, this is the expensive super duper um, Zener diode I talked about, the 1N825 mega expensive super Zener. And then you see those two resistors. One of them is adjusted for the perfect current to that one. So the voltage output here is not super important. They're just using regular uh, resistors here to set that point. And then they, of course, regulate a parallel regulator here to that the wanted voltage up here. Okay. And uh, this is the power resistor that I talked about is mounted directly up across a C1. So to make those op amps work in the good old uh, times, we didn't have a rail to rail op amps. And this is of course also the issue here, right? So this is why there is a negative 6.2 volts. And uh, this voltage is only used to drive the op amps. See, that'll be the op amp supply voltage so that whatever that is is totally not important it's just making sure that you can steer the input and outputs of the op amps correctly the positive voltage here is of course a part of the reference system let's uh, go back to the ground of the Zener diode so this point here is connected to the output positive and then the output positive see there's another wire going to that capacitor. Isn't that cool? So this capacitor here, the ripple current from all this and whatever that is left of this, they don't want this wire 
to be shared with the voltage measurement. I think that is quite nice. This reveals they are really, really smart. You don't see see it um, separated that much normally. <laughs> so I totally like that. So this is, of course, um, the resistors used for the voltage measurement. The, those will be used for the current set point. And then here we measure the output voltage that goes into this op amp. See, this point here and this point here. And then when you are in voltage mode, this output here becomes low. All right, look at that. We got a diode multiplexer here. So that means only one of those op amps, they will be active uh, at, the, uh, at a time, right? So right now we're in voltage mode and this output pulls down and then it pulls this voltage down on R7. That means it can pull down the output this way, okay? So when you want to have higher output voltage, this one goes up and then the voltage just follow. Whatever it is on the other side here is not important. You don't care about this voltage drop. This is not important. And then this just follows this one up and give you more output. You can also see another cool thing is that we have one diode drop here, one diode drop here, one here, and then you're out. And then you have, of course, a little bit of drop. Uh, depending on the output current, you'll have more and more drop on this one. So that means the output here is just a few volts higher compared to this point. So we have plenty of headroom all the way up to this supply that is 9.6 volts over the output voltage. In current mode, the opposite happens. Then this one becomes uh, active and then pulls this one down. When this happens, and then there is no, of course, uh, voltage regulation, then this one goes down and pull down the output, but then this output here hammers up because it wants to control the output, and then this one becomes um, yeah, disconnected, so to speak, right? And then, yeah, the current regulator here takes over and handles the output. And this is also uh, one of my uh, upgrade features that I definitely want to show you. So you can imagine when we're in voltage mode, this one is the low, this one is high. When we're in current mode, this one is the low, this one is the high, all right? So imagine if we swap the power on diode, this one we have here at the front, that is weak and old and is almost not visible anymore. Take these wires away, and I want to take these two wires to this point and that point. I want to have a dual color LED with only two wires in it. So it's a, a little bit of a special uh, dual color with only two pins. And to make it red and uh, green, you just swap the polarity of the signal. And this is exactly what we got here. We got two signals that goes up and down like that, right? So you just need two wires and one series resistor to the LED for this to work. So for the sake of demonstration, I just can't find a dual color red green in a three millimeter, but I'm definitely gonna go and figure that out soon. So this is just a demo. I'm sorry it looks a little bit uh, ugly, but that will be the two um, cathodes of this um, diode multiplexer that goes into this uh, common place. As you see here, that will be the two commons, and that goes, of course, to the two outputs of this op amp. All right, let's try and plug this in and see how this turns out. So the thing is, you can just stick this board in like this, and uh, it's, of course, super easy to do. You just put it in. Come on, man. Look at that is how you go and um, let's see if it smokes or not power on and see how annoying this is so this is a blinky blinky and it's super super dim obviously this um led i got up here is also a little bit <laughs> dim but now we are in voltage mode and you can see it's uh, green let's turn down the 
output current and it goes red. Doot, 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 doot. And it's of course not affected by output voltage. You can turn the output voltage up and down, la 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 la. And it's of course not going to have any kind of brightness. Uh, it's not going to affect this LED at all. Ha ha. I totally like this idea. So yeah, just pull this out and uh, plug it in here. This is just exactly how they should have been done. And, and you can do this mod on any of these, by the way. And a lot of other uh, power supplies with two op amps like that this is exactly what you can do. Super, super smart. Let's try and play a little bit with the one that is working. So what I'm measuring on here is the main charge capacitor. That one right there. And I'm measuring, of course, uh, the voltage on that. So we'll see what's going on with the ripple. All right. So let's crank on the funny power supply like that and then just what we can do here is just crank up the voltage to full potential right so this is 300 uh, volts and um, I of course got the DC voltage right here we got 100 volts per division I am of course using a 100 to 1 probe that will be both uh, this one can use uh, can handle both ac and dc and all that stuff and i'm measuring on the cathode or, or the collector on the on the output transistor this is the same as the charge capacitor right let's try and load this power supply a little bit here is 100 milliamps and um, here you got, of course, a little bit of ripple. When you're measuring your ripple, obviously you want to go into AC mode. And now I got five volts per division. And here is the funky thing. Look at that. This is unsymmetric. This is not what I would expect. I would expect both of these to have exactly the same amplitude. So this is not good or at least it is not what i expected to find and this is the power supply that is working i would expect this to be the same so is that my bridge my four diodes in the rectifier that's not working or is it one of the scrs with a very different trigger point is that what's going on here i mean i need to dig a little bit deeper into this and see if i can figure out what is going on? There's also another thing I want to show you. So I'm now 20 volts per division. Let's just try and turn it on again. Splat. And then we turned off the power supply. Look at that. DC voltage is just high on the main charge capacitor. And there's nothing that discharges this capacitor. It's, it's probably my probe and some other really high resistance uh, components. It's just staying high forever and that is simply because of the way that they have done this so the discharge circuits down here with the active constant current discharge only works if there is voltage on these so when you turn off your mains this capacitors here they discharge really fast and then they don't discharge the main capacitor right here that is a funny, funny problem. And now I need to go and poke around with the diodes in this area. So I need manually to discharge this voltage. I don't want to get a big surprise with a charge capacitor of uh, 40 volts or something like that, right? So it's actually quite easy to get access to the main board as well. All you have to do is just... Yeah, unscrew these things, of course, and uh, then you can just uh, flip down this uh, front and then you can solder everything like that. What I am playing around with is this uh, ripple uh, regulator thingy. And what we have down here, that will be the four main diodes. So I just changed those and there, that will be the original diodes. And I also measured them and they don't really look like they're a defect or anything. So I don't feel it's that. It's much more... Uh, likely to be the different SCRs and they also look a little bit different so somebody 
changed one of them and not the other one. So they're different brand or different, uh, I don't know, a little bit different trigger point or internal resistance or something like that. But I want to understand what is going on. So I just tried to change the diodes first. I don't know. Yeah. Just well, well. can't forget the ripple measurements and the ripple uh, funkiness here. So let's try and dig a little bit down to that and see if we can understand what is going on here. So I'm measuring the ripple voltage on C9 or the collector of the output transistor with my high voltage, uh, high speed probe to my scope. And I have here two volts per division. And now I crank on the load. So this is 50 milliamps. And then what you see here is a nice symmetric ripple um, of a four volts peak peak. Okay, that is exactly what I would expect. So now let's do something funny. Let's change the load to 100 milliamps. So this is 100%. Now, why is the ripple not symmetric anymore? So from this point to that point is 50 hertz. And between these, that will be your 100 hertz. As you can see here, I got five milliseconds per division. So for a better understanding on the circuit, the previous ripple measurements, that is the top of C9 or the collector of the output transistor. Okay, now let's try and measure the two points right here. That will be the two SCRs. And uh, those two points here, we just call them A and B, just to make sure that we call it uh, the same thing. I'll probably put in a little better picture or something like that here, right? So as you can see here, if we follow this line here, we've got an inductor, we've got the transformer winding, and then we go back here, okay? And when this one here is a positive, you get the peak voltage for the trigger system, and then you trigger this one and you charge the capacitor, and then the negative way is this way. The other way around when this one is triggered, this one is the positive, and then this one is the negative. So in either way, this signal always go through a the inductor, the coil, or the other way, coil inductor. So it's uh, a little bit different, but they're in series, right? So it should be symmetric. So that will be the A and the B signals. They look uh, very, very much the same. You can see a little bit of ringing like that on one of the signals. But other than that, the whole uh, curve shape and all that is more or less very much the same. This is 50 milliamp load. Let's just for fun go back to showing only the reference here and then I crank up the current or to 100 milliamps just to show what uh, what happens then the t it changes the the timing right here okay so now I save this one as my 100 milliamp uh, uh, reference signal and then I go to the other channel and here comes the fun thing why is this one not looking like that one? See, there's a different amount of energy here. And of course, this is why my ripple is not <laughs> symmetric. And I cannot figure this out right now why it is looking different like this. Is it the SCRs, the trigger point of the SCR or the internal resistance of the SCR? Is one of them defect? Uh, I need to go and pick up some SCRs today because this is driving me absolutely nuts. Just cannot forget this uh, Ripple SCR <clears throat> driving controlling issue. So, as I couldn't find any SCRs to um, try with, I went all the way to Peter's place today and got a few of these. They have been um, saved for a good day like this. And I, of course, manually tested the trigger point and the minimum holding current and all those things. So I'm very, very sure 
they can work. And that is the pinout of the original one. I did, of course, solder the original ones out like this so I can test what is going on. And the little resistor here in the gate, um, that's actually so I can test a gate currents, what is actually going on in here. And um, now I'll try and put the other SCRs in here and see if it um, even works or solves my unsymmetric issue. So the new old SCRs, they are now mounted. It wasn't that difficult and it's the same maximum current, but problem is definitely not solved. It is exactly the same that is going on here. So um, what the heck is uh, going on? I still haven't figured that out. I can just say that um, it is not so easy. And of course, if I go down to 50 milliamps like that, let's save the reference track and let's go to the other one. I need to be very careful not to electrocute myself here or to touch anything like that. And then again, at 50 milliamps, they're all perfectly fine. Oh, what a confusing day. <laughs> I think it calls for a little celebration. I've been fighting with this for three days. I just refused to give up. I wanted to understand the symmetry problem in this rectifier and there is definitely a reason for it and i finally figured it out ha <laughs> ha i am a little bit happy that it i managed to do this so here we go we got a stored image you see this is the other way around and now i have the live image is the green one and that is exactly the opposite phase i am now triggering on the yellow signal the yellow signal is a, um, a signal also from the transformer, another winding, the winding that's normally used for the LED. So I know that I have exactly the same reference point. So no matter what is going on, right? So I took out the inductor. Remember, in this rectifier coupling here, we have a very important inductor in series with the secondary winding. And this inductor goes, of course, here to where we have this weird unsymmetric problem going on, right? So what I did here is I took it out, soldered two red wires, then I measure my ripple in phase with my other winding, obviously. So I store this image and now I swap the inductor. Okay, simply swap those two wires to the inductor. And now it goes the other way around. How is that possible? So we have now found an inductor that is magnetic. This one is magnetized in one direction so that it will hit the saturation a lot easier in one direction and not in the other direction. And this is exactly why it's doing this. How funny is that? Did you really <laughs> figure this out? Oh, please comment if you figured this out and you're so much smarter than me. I would love to know, but that is what is going on here. So can I demagnetize this? Can I get it back to symmetric? I don't know. See, there's a big air gap in this transformer and that is uh, so it can handle DC. I don't know exactly why it is supposed to handle DC. Um... Why is it supposed to handle DC? Because it always goes in the same direction. You see? No, it is not. So this one goes positive or this one goes positive. I mean, it's it should be completely perfect. 50 hertz positive and negative should be exactly the same. That's just what I'm saying. I don't understand it. the magnetized problem. How did that happen? But now at least I know exactly what is going on? It is all about the inductor. Oh yeah, another thing. Um, I measured this uh, inductor here and it is uh, 273 millihenries and the DC resistance is uh, 27 ohms. Just so you know, because it is not written anywhere in the schematic, anywhere else in the 
documentation. So now we know, and I will of course add it to my um, schematic here. So we um, so we got this it. This is the other one of my power supplies, and it is of course now up and running as well. And it of course got exactly the same uh, problem. It is, um, as you can see here, that will be the current obviously, and this is the curve you need to look at. See, exactly the same happens. So the inductor gets saturated and then it goes absolutely Bahamas, just like the other one. I think this one got a little bit more ripple. And also you see uh, on this one, you see those little spikes right there? That will be the trigger current that goes through the SCRs and then it is visible on the capacitor. And this is because in this unit here, I don't have the 100 ohm gate resistors I added in the other one. Um, I added gate resistors in these two so I could measure what is going on. And this gate current reduction, or then I smooth the current, I have a little more control of what is going on here because now there is nothing that limits the current around here. So this is what I think is a very, very good design improvement to have. But anyway, this super cool um, regulator is definitely something that is working. And uh, you can use more or less, because this is super low frequency and low charge and all that. And we have a very high uh, pulse charge here. So you can use any other uh, SCRs more or less. Those are um, also um, high sensitivity uh, gates. So that is a very, very good option for the other ones. And they're more powerful and all that kind of stuff. So with these, I was able to repair both of my power supplies. The only little challenge I have now, that is how do I make a nice case? because I want to have a lid that goes around here, or maybe maybe I could use the holes that I have here and just screw some straight plates on like that and build my own cabinet spot. I think that is a little bit uh, of another challenge. I think I won't um, make this video any longer. I think it's already super, super detailed and uh, more than long enough for all this anyway. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you had a little bit of fun. See you around. Bye bye.